This programme is for entertainment purposes. A 900-year-old building that houses a malevolent spirit that wants to harm. 24 hours in Tamworth Castle. Welcome to Most Haunted. This week we brought you to a place that's supposed to be haunted by some very malevolent spirits. With entities causing momentary blindness, strange apparitions staring from windows, and a weeping lost soul who walks the castle in search of a murdered lover. We just had to investigate Tamworth Castle. Tamworth Castle has been occupied throughout most of its 800-year history as both a fortress and a family home. In 913, Ethelflaed, King Alfred's daughter, built a fort on a mound for protection against the Danes. This was part of the first construction of the castle. Not only did she stop the Danes from entering the fort, she also drove them from Tamworth. The castle has an intriguing past with many different tales to tell about the different families that have lived here. Eleven different owners resided here until 1879, when the town council of Tamworth bought the castle for £3,000. There's been an awful lot of history on this exact site. Battles between Saxons and Vikings and feuding, siege, and of course, with a castle of such antiquity, you're going to have um, ghosts and spirits, and there are many sightings of ghosts here. Lots of the staff report seeing figures out of the corners of their eye when they're opening up the building or closing the building. They see someone who, when they look again, isn't there. That's male and female figures and indistinct figures. I've been called out when the alarms have gone off for no apparent reason on a number of occasions and lots of other incidents in terms of lights going on, doors opening and closing. I think really we've got 900 years of history here and I think name a type of spooky activity and there's someone on the staff now or in the past who will claim it's happened to them. Two workers saw a strange apparition when entering this room. As the ghostly shape came towards one, he felt a sharp pain in his face and then was momentarily blinded. A blue swirling mist then flew around the room and then exited through this window. I came up one morning to open up and just stepped into the room two or three steps uh, and suddenly felt a tingling all over my face and neck area. Um, as though sound had been thrown in my face, um, make sure you close your eyes. So I looked down, expecting to see debris all over me, and nothing there. And as I looked up, uh, in the distance, um, towards the Gibson Canning's display in the corner, um, there was a, a cloud, a mist, um, and I concentrated on it just for a few seconds, and uh, then suddenly it just drifted towards the light of the window and disappeared. A lady in a long white dress has been witnessed in this room many times. She's also been seen weeping at the top of the battlements. Now it's said that she was captured and held here at the castle by the wicked Sir Tarquin. Legend has it that she actually threw herself off these battlements and is often seen up here wailing and bemoaning. But I have a theory of my own. I personally believe that one of the ghosts could well be the ghost of Princess Ethelflaed, a very, very strong woman, a very powerful woman, Lady of the Mercians. Defeat of the Vikings in two battles was trying to rid Mercia and the Danelaw of the Vikings, but unfortunately died in the middle of her quest. She died here in 918. She still wanders this place 
because she has unfinished work. St. Editha has been seen walking these stairs after midnight. It's said that she was called from her grave from the angry prayers of other nuns. Also, the voices of two men have been heard talking on these stairs when there's no one there. The black lady, they believe it to be St. Editha, seen on the staircase. There is actually a photograph in existence, I believe taken in the 1940s, of this figure on the wooden staircase, a cowled figure. I've been up and down that many times, but on this one particular occasion I was taking some friends around the castle and I suddenly felt a little disorientated. I thought, oh, I don't feel right. And I suddenly had this wave of nausea pass over me. And I said to my friend, I'm going to have to stop. I said, I don't feel right at all. I feel very strange. And I felt as if I was being urged into the balustrade at the side. Not pushed, but being urged that way. And he came up behind me and he put his hand out by my shoulder and he said, I can feel a cold spot, and we could. The air above and below was quite warm, and to either side. It was this decided coldness. And we'd checked around for draughts, couldn't see any, couldn't feel any, because you do pick them up there. Couldn't explain it. Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, had spent time at the castle prior to the rest of the crew's arrival to conduct what is called a baseline test. Phil, this is a massive castle, mm -hmm. isn't it? How do you begin with the baseline test? Where do you start? Well, the best thing that we do is find out of people who have witnessed um, occurrences here and then centralise all the baseline tests in those areas, for instance, the haunted bedroom and the stairwell. What have you actually done in those baseline tests? Well, we set a motion detector on the stairwell. Um, this is because St Edith, or supposedly St Edith's ghost, has been seen on that stairwell. Um, also, we have uh, a voice recorder in the haunted bedroom. Um, male voices have been heard here too, so um, that's two locations we've used. What do you think of it as a supposed haunted location? It's a brilliant place, I've got to admit, it's a brilliant place. Um, as far as hauntings go, there isn't an awful lot of history um, connected with the place as, as far as occurrence is concerned but they are fairly recent so hopefully we're going to be in with a good night. Now there's a particular photograph that was been taken. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that photograph? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's a hoax? Um, it's difficult to say. I don't see any real reason for it to be a fake. Um, apparently it shows a hooded, hooded figure coming down the stairs. Now when they took this, the flash lit up the room and the area of the stairs and there was nothing on the stairwell at all. Um, when it was developed, that's when they saw the figure. Um, it's an interesting one, and whether it is an actual genuine ghost, because they are difficult to get on camera, um, we'll never know. We're dealing with a place that has things going on now. We're not talking of old, old stories. The, the staff experience things now. So if they experience things, perhaps last week or last month, I think there's every possibility that we, hopefully, could experience something here tonight. You're here, you're disturbing them. They may not like it. They don't like change. And they don't like new things. It was a beautiful summer's day when we filmed at Tamworth Castle, and we all felt very comfortable being there during the day. But would all that change when medium Derek Akora was invited to join us? With the team gathered, we were ready to begin our investigation of Tamworth Castle. Just as we've entered this area, maybe, um, the atmosphere and the conditions that seem to be um, coming round me seems to be more residual. And I know we are being listened to in this atmosphere by an individual spirit, a person, it's a male for certain, and, but I'm also being aware of a lady now as well. Now, oh! There was a lady of the cloth here, murdered. Oh. A lady whose life was taken away from her. How was she murdered? I don't know. The word retribution comes in in thought here. Retribution with this. 
maybe as we go on through the investigation, he'll give me the information to this. Mm. But I, you see, I'm just picking up different personality characters, spirit people that are actually active here in this castle. <gasps> Say it again. I can't pronounce it. How do I pronounce that? It's either Larkin or Tarquin. Larkin, Tarquin. Sir Tarquin. Sir Tarquin is evident walking here. Oh, what a Sir Tarquin. It comes through this door. Yeah. So he comes... He, he... he comes through here. He makes noises here. You see, he comes from this passageway here. And, you know, it's like as if I get a, a crossed energy of this person, Sir Tarquin. Mm -hmm. He walks here. He yeah. comes through. His energy stops here at times. When he gets here, at times, these two spirit people cross each other. Who's the, who's the other spirit person you're talking about? Yeah. To the naked eye. I don't know if she's been seen. She should have been, but I don't know. But who, who, sorry, who's down there that would have just banged the door, then? That anybody? You want to go and check the door down there, because somebody oh, just happened. checked. There was a noise, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, first strong. Yeah. I want to go onto those stairs yeah. very shortly yeah. because when she's standing on the stair, this man, the, their energies cross. He stops here and she would be standing a bit further down and it's just like an eye contact between the two of them. To the naked eye, you're wearing black, I'm wearing mm -hmm. black. I feel to the naked eye, not the mediumistic eye, she'd be seen there in a heart manifestation and she'd be seen like a, either a shadow or darkened image. Right. And she often on these stairwells here. Do you know who she is? I hope to find out before yeah. the evening is through. Yeah. But I, I do feel that um, there's a torment, you see. There's a torment. And this residual energy tells me there's a torment. So if we stand to there, I'll pick her energies up. Yes. OK? Well, it appears that the door there um, was just slammed shut. It was completely short when we had a look at it a minute ago. No other doors are shut in the vicinity, so that's the only source of the noise I can think of at the minute. So it's a draft, maybe? maybe. No, because I've just been down there, um, check the door. If you push it, it stops halfway. Oh, right, so somebody would have had to have somebody slammed Somebody would have it. had to physically slam the door shut, yeah. OK. So and is that everybody's accounted for, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah? Right, I OK. I think we should um, keep that under observation. Okay, for today. later on. Mm -hmm. Come on then, Derek. Okay. Right, okay. Now, since coming down to this point here, what I want to do is just like, often with residual energy, if not activity of a spirit person, once walking into the atmosphere where something is either manifested, i.e., a spirit, man or woman, if it comes often enough, when we walk into this atmosphere, like we've just done now, mm. I just want to copy, if I may, something that has been, I feel, seen, maybe, or even seen and heard, or, like, just, just for a few seconds, a reenactment, because this energy makes me want to reenact. And I feel as if I've got my left hand like this here, and I seem to be doing this. Now, that energy but most definitely is of a lady, mm -hmm. OK? However, that lady's not, and I, this is what I feel, I do not feel as if she realises or knows, even to this moment in time, the spirit lady thinks, when she comes to this area and she stops here and she looks up like that, whoever's up there, whether it be another spirit person or a physical person like you and I, mm -hmm. she assumes that she can be seen. Mm -hmm in full form, right. but she's not. She, she can't manage it. Not, not a, a lot, anyway. And this is the same woman that the gentleman up there is seeing. Yes, can I just give you this name? Yeah. Thank you. I get it very strongly and clearly, and I hope maybe this has got a link with her, but it sounded like Edith. Edith or something sounding like Edith. Mm -hmm. And I feel the reason why people can't see it fully manifestation of her, um, and for so long, has been because she's only 
she's found an inlet and an outlet. Although she is active here, she does go out of the atmosphere. Right, okay. All right? Right. Very much so. The atmosphere was beginning to change rapidly, and we all had a feeling we were not alone. Would any of the spirits that have been seen regularly make their presence known to the most haunted crew? I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. So far, Derek had not picked up on any troublesome spirit, so we were all interested to see what he would pick up in the long gallery, where some of the more sinister occurrences have taken place. I feel that the conditions here, at times, through a spirit person, not the residual energy, a spirit person, if you to be, or any of us walking physically in this area, when that person was here, mm. would cause um, you to would want to affect you, right. absolutely. And this man would have found it quite easy to do this. So if a person was to walk, especially in this area, from the stairwell, it's like as if he's waiting to pounce. Oh, God. From here. Yeah. And I just take his place as if he's waiting. And then he wants to walk down this area or around here. He'd wait until virtually we get to this area and he would, anyone in this vicinity here, physically, he would then produce something of a phenomena. Very easy for him to do. And I feel that phenomena can affect the ears, the, the mouth, here, and especially the eyes. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Yeah. He's learnt the arts of this. Has this been yeah, sort of thing? It's happened to um, a lady here called June. Um, she came up here and she, Did she lose described. Her yeah, she described as um, having a sensation like sand into our eyes. He's and washed it. And a workman was made. And a workman, yeah, also felt um, a pain in his, yes. uh, in his face. And okay. then was made temporarily blinded. And was temporarily but, blinded, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this one's learnt the art of how to do this. Now, that's taken it a step further than just making noises or he's wanting to cause alarm. Now, if he's learned the art of how to um, seemingly hurt the physical, like we've experienced on other investigations, um, we've got to try and find out the reason why, uh, I feel anyway. Um, I know he was no good. Who? Thank you. Is that relevant information? Thank you, Sam. We'll get to know who it is. Oh. OK, it's because of this item being in this castle further down. He shows me something. He's just pulled in his hand. Look at that. Whew. Off comes the head. So many. OK. There's an area in the castle mm -hmm. where there is a tool, an instrument. Uh, it's like a sword. Right. Now, there's a linkage somewhere. So that, I feel, would be on the lower ground. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say it again? Now, whoever it is that had, that owned, that had this tool, OK, is the one that's causing these conditions in this area. Right. Should we check with Richard? Hmm? Richard? Yeah. Is this right? Yeah, certainly right. I mean, downstairs here in this building, there is a, um, a very large, a very nasty um, executioner's sword. A headsman's sword. Is it wide it's and big? extremely large, extremely wide, and was used for taking off people's heads. Um, it is actually Spanish. Okay. But, I mean, I don't know what that means, whether it was ever used here or Can, whether it... No. I don't know about that. I don't feel it... Do you mind me saying it? No. I don't feel it was used here, but the spirit individual going back in time came and travelled with the with sword yeah. and come here and housed himself and has stayed here ever since. Well, it is on display here. Downstairs. Okay. Well, if someone can Show guide me. me to it, and you know, yeah, and I can go, I'll be able to link it. Absolutely. Shall we go? Yeah. Yeah. yeah please. Come on. Yeah. It's somewhere in here, Derek. Okay. Is that right? 
right. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This sword has taken so many heads oh. off men's shoulders, maybe women's, I don't know, but this is the um, evil conditions that travelled with this instrument and was brought here. This was never used here. Oh, terrible, but, terrible. Yes. Oh. Well, it is there, the residual energy there is with the, um, the, uh, the, the torment of the last seconds as the person's yes. been thrown oh, down. And this, the, the, the soul that took the heads of people is the soul that is here, kept coming with this sword, and has housed itself here. Is there any way of, I don't know how it works, whether you can uh, touch that sword and pick up on the name of, of the person who's... No. no? Oh. S-O-L-A-R... Is it E or S? Sound like Solaris? 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 Seb? B. Sebastian. Sebastiol or Sebastian. And also it sounds like Franco. Franco Sebastian Soleris. Franco Sebastian Soleris. Is, is there any way of us checking that name? I, I, I would. It's possible. I mean, obviously, like we have in, in, in this country. Um, names of, of executioners. Um, obviously, there'd be various um, different regions of Spain that would probably be have their own executioners. Is there any way you could try and... I, I, yes, there's a, every possibility that we could. I'm going to hold you to that. Well, I, in fact, I'll go off to Spain and... and uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that there is a possibility, just mm -hmm. as our executioners are listed, mm -hmm. and we are not talking of necessarily hundreds of years ago, but mm -hmm. the Spanish was doing it up until very late. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So there is a possibility, yes. Well, they're the only use of names that I got with this. That would yeah. be great, Do I actually find the name yeah. of the person? Yeah, oh. that and if sword. we found that name on the records, that would yeah. be just Those amazing. three names are connected. Great. Franco, Sebastian, Solers. The Spanish executioner that Derek had named, Franco Sebastian Solaris, could not be found in any records here or in Spain. The Battlements was a place where many people had seen the ghost of a woman weeping, dressed in white. But who was she? With the whole castle thrown into darkness, we slowly made our way up to the top of the building, using the light from our night vision cameras. So just as we're walking along um, on this level, Evie, yeah. so, um, I am aware, um, on, I feel on a regular basis, of a woman's movements on this level, a woman, not a man. I feel as if, in her way, she would stand, look back and reflect, and she'd come from this position, and it's roughly around this area. She would stop from her walks, and then, you know, come forward from the wall, and, you know, look over. And as I pick up that energy, and residual energy, of her, and I say, it's just picking up that picture and the feelings of her movements. She is, most definitely, very, very active here at this castle. I pick up the lady's emanations. A lady who wears a very long, full dress, mm -hmm. a very light colour and like a creamy, um, creamy colour, leading, I suppose, to white. Yeah. Uh, and very um, uh, petite-looking. And, you know, I get this as if I want to scream, scream out and wail out and cry out if I just want to go forward and topple over. Mm -hmm. And it's like she hits the ground and she's left her physical body. Oh, oh. I feel as if she was embraced here um, and a, a great feeling of um, being stuck here. The only way I can describe it is if she's captive or she's being held mm -hmm. and quite liked it. How oh, you can like being captive, I don't know, but quite liking it. Uh, and then a kind-hearted man 
try to come along and, is that release? Release her. And she didn't want it. She didn't want it. And the person, the person who she got to like and even love, she even loved him. The one who tried to release her from captive, slayed the person who kept, kept her here. And she's tormented as she walks throughout this castle, but up here especially. Should we move on? Yes. As we go along here as well, Vivi, um, and we go into this area here through this doorway, this, most definitely, this inner area here from this passageway would definitely, at times, I feel, <coughs> have this, uh, draw this lady's attention to this area. No, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm picking up some kind of energy at this moment that's making the, the whole of my outer throat here very sore. And especially this side here, as if it's like sore to the touch as well, as if I've been bruised. Now, I feel, I feel um, it's because we come into this area. This man, the Spanish person, this man who was the, you know, the person who used the sword, I feel his influence, okay, is around and I feel it's possibly him that's causing this thing to my neck here. Do you want to go to the room where you picked up on him? Yes, I, I'd that like the exhibit? to. Mm, yes, 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 Should yes, we go yes, there? And we just see it maybe <coughs> him trying to do something, you know, in some manner, some way. This man's energies, who was causing all these problems to people, although he is here active, that is about the worst I feel that he can do, causing something round what we call our senses. Yeah. Eyes, ears, mouth, throat. Mm. You know, round here. Mm. <coughs> um, it's not likely to be permanent damage or anything like that. No, no, it's temporary. Mm. Now, that, what I had outside, has gone now. Mm. So that tells me he's been around us, listening to us. Mm. Like a lot of the spirit people do. Mm. Um, maybe we can... Um, especially... You know, it's funny, this... If, you, if we later go down where his instrument of death is yeah. and we not like basic words not actually wind him up but if we were to confront him yes. and say to him well come on for all your viciousness mm -hmm. and your evil and what you did and what you still continue mm -hmm. to want to do to innocent people come on show us your hands see what you can do I reckon we're going to get a response. Do you think we should do that now? I'd love to. Let's go do that now. Yeah. Which way is that way? It's back this way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I knew that. It was time for the crew to split into smaller groups. They slowly made their way to a chosen room to hopefully see or hear something paranormal. Derek, Tom, Phil Wyman and myself decided to go back into the Great Hall where the infamous executioner's sword hung. Yeah. Yeah. The Great Hall certainly had an unusual atmosphere, and it was a place that I would not have ventured alone. It was a long time before anything happened. Franco Sebastian Solaro, if you are here in this room or this castle, and you can hear my voice, could you please make your presence known to us? We know you are here, and I know that you can hear my voice. He's not, um, yeah. he's not, he's not, whatever it, he is in, in energy, no. he hasn't come in. No. He's somewhere around, yeah. but he hasn't come in here. I mean, it's a big place, but it feels quite cosy at the minute, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not right. See, that's the door, the door, but there was no foot sound, was there? See, this is the lid. Yeah, that's just the noise. 
Was that Creek when it shuts, Derek? No, no. It's one of these. I think it's the one toilet. Yeah, but they can't come. They can't it come out. It was that noise. It was. Now something's happened actually in that toilet. Okay. That was the sound of the toilet. Yeah, it was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And there's nobody in there. No. That was really weird. We all heard that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. But the fact well, we is, is that you, that you can't come steps. out. If you if you actually come out of those toilets, you yes. have to come past us. What about up the stairs? Oh yeah. Where do they go? Well, they go up. Well, Back out here. Oh no. Yeah, there's one walking out there. Oh, this bit there, especially. Oh, yeah, we would have done that. Yeah. Could have heard them. Let's reconstruct it. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go in back in here with Tom yeah. and the camera and we'll see if we can hear, yeah. hear anything. So, do the door. Yeah, you would hear them. Yeah, we heard you go upstairs. Okay. So that means... The door, there was no footsteps or sounds. Oh. What we heard, and that was all four of us, wasn't it? Well, that was strange. Yeah, mm. strange. Come on, is there anybody here in the room with us? Any spirits? Yeah. Out there. Mm -hmm. To me, it sounded like sandals on, on you know, footstep sandals, mm -hmm. but fairly quick, like tip, 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 tip. Yeah. I did hear something. Yeah. I can't say I heard enough of it to be able to mm -hmm. see it was one thing or another. By the time we got out, we were up rather quickly. Yeah. To come through that door, the speed in which we came up the stairs, the person, the that? physical person... Oh, what? What? What was that noise? What noise? I heard that. Get that crack down there again. Show yourself to us. Can we see you? We know that you have made yourself known to other people, and we've come here. Okay. There. Shh, 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 shh. That was the door moving there. Oh, of course it was. I saw that before in the eye. You saw it. I saw it as well. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. If that was you, if that was you. Please, could you do something like that again? We could not find a logical explanation for the footsteps or the door opening. We knew there was no one else walking around that part of the castle. Whether we had just witnessed something paranormal, we will never be sure. So far, nothing out of the ordinary had happened to the rest of the team, and some unsatisfied crew members went on to investigate further. I was determined to hopefully experience something paranormal, and I decided to go back to the haunted bedroom with Carl and Rick. Well, we're here now in the haunted bedroom, and, um... Oh, sorry, I just got something out across my screen there. Did you? Perhaps. Got a little misty um, thing. And Carl and Rick and myself. And so far, um, just walked in, and it feels absolutely fine. Oh. There's a sound outside there, I think, yeah. Lots of things have been seen here. This is a matter of sickness, isn't it? I've got all Is there anyone here in this room? Is there anyone 
here in this room that would like to make contact with us? We're hearing some noises outside the room. If that is you, we invite you in. Is there anybody here in the room with us? Any spirit person that would like to show themselves to us? Like to make a noise? We ask you most humbly and with respect. We don't mean any disrespect. We know that you're here. Can you understand me? Can you understand my voice? If you can, please, please, could you try to communicate with us? We mean you no harm, we're just very, very interested. Move in this place without making a sound, without, without making noise. I'll leave the door open as if it does it again. Well, let's, let's stay here for, for a while. Okay. Let's stay here. Let's stay here. Sure. I just thought I heard a, a woman crying. Did you? Is that that? Uh, thing? Yeah. Yeah. If that's you who's I'd crying. If that's you who's making the noise, Edith, is it you? Edith? We need to know that you are here. Did you hear that? Did you hear mm -hmm. that? You should hear a bang, can't you? Yeah. It's in there. Oh, no, I think it's, 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 it's like something was trying was try to come through to us upstairs, on mm. these stairs. When we were upstairs, that there was definite footsteps here. Mm. And that door shut, and it's almost, that's like saying, I want to come in and shut the door behind. St. Aditha, if it's you that is seen in this room, please, please try to show yourself to us. We are here with the greatest respect for you, for your beliefs, and the reason that you're back here.
please, please, could you try to communicate with us? Jesus Christ! What it sounds like a fire alarm has gone off. Um, now, this is strange because this has been known to happen before to one of the staff members, so I think we'd better go and find out yeah. what's gone on. Let's get out of here. According to the curator, Frank Caldwell, the fire alarm was set off for no apparent reason. Unfortunately, a full evacuation of Tamworth Castle was required. Could this have been paranormal? It was quite interesting that I'd just asked to give a sign, and we certainly got one. We've checked all the detectors, and the detector that goes off flashes a little red light. None of the detectors are flashing, so none of them have been activated. Nothing, no manual brake glass has gone. They're the only two main means of switching it on. So I don't know what it is. Has this um, ever happened before, Frank? Well, the alarms go off in the middle of the night, but usually, usually it's a malfunction that we can spot straight away. And it's, can the, alert, can the engineers find a fault, or do they just say, don't know, it's reset, shouldn't happen again? I don't know. When we were in the room, Yvette, Rick and myself, you just said, if anyone is here, please let us know, and then the fire alarm went off. And just before that, you reckon you heard three bangs or something? Yeah. We heard footsteps <coughs> running up the haunted steps, and there was nobody there. I think it's a coincidence that it's happened to two separate groups of people. Yeah, but the fact and that there's no reason for that to go no off. No reason for them to go off as well, I think that's sort of quite interesting as well. It's brown floor, there's absolutely nothing there. Right, well, I can't find out why. Um, I think the investigation today went exceptionally well. Um, I came to the castle, I looked inside, it's... A fantastic looking place, it's got all the atmosphere that we needed. I went straight into the Great Hall and was drawn to this huge executioner's sword. And I don't know, in the back of my mind, I almost willed Derek to sort of come up with something. And my God, didn't he just. This one Spanish individual spirit person is the malevolent um, spirit person that is at this castle to this day and the negative conditions that have been shown to maybe visitors or people who have actually been in the castle is all borne out and borne down to him. I was quite impressed with some of the activity that we caught, like um, doors opening and noises that we can't really explain. We've been to all sorts of haunted properties, but um, I was starting to wonder at the beginning, you know, is anything going to kick off? But in my opinion, it's, it's as good as any place we've been to. It wasn't until we were editing this programme that we noticed that the locked-off camera facing the haunted staircase moves on its own. Seconds later, the door bangs. Every member of our crew was accounted for during the time that this piece of footage was recorded. So what does Dr Matthew Smith think? The camera at the bottom of the stairs appears to move on its own. Um, so on the face of it, it appears very unusual because we're confident that we've accounted for all members of the crew. So assuming there's nobody else in the building that was able to get into that room and move the camera without us knowing about it, then we're left with a very, very unusual effect. Jesus Christ! The fire alarm uh, appears to go off with no normal explanation. Now, assuming it's not simply a faulty fire alarm, because it has happened before, and assuming nobody was actually able to set the fire alarm off without any of us knowing about it, then we're left with a fairly unusual effect, particularly as the timing of the, the alarm going off directly coincides with Yvette asking for a sign to be shown. Well, we're all still outside here. We cannot go back into Tamworth Castle because apparently uh, they're still trying to find out what the problem was and what set the alarm off. We don't know. But we have had a very, very good investigation. So uh, we are going to have an early night and go to bed as it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Until the next time, sleep tight. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's a beat.